All right, welcome back, everybody. We've got another gun gripe for you today, and uh, this is a pretty good one. We've been thinking about this one a little while. This one is called What's Good for the Goose, and you've heard the old term that goes, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Yeah, that's correct. Well, we're kind of looking at it from the standpoint of gun ownership, and what we mean is, you know, just because someone is, you know, lives in, let's say, New York or California or even Scotland or some overseas country where you know, gun ownership is limited. In my opinion, I think that it's a basic human right to own firearms. And from America's perspective, I think it's kind of silly where you cross over state lines and then in one state, the laws are different. And then in this state, they're different. And you go all these different places in America, the laws are so scatterbrained. But it seems to me like your Second Amendment rights are your Second Amendment rights no matter where you are. Well, if you live in certain locales, it's a privilege. It's not a right. Uh, we have people coming in here from Chicago, uh, especially around Illinois and things like that, from other states, California. They cannot believe that they can walk into this store and walk out in 15 minutes with a gun. They don't believe that. I have people calling me every day, where do I go to register my gun? Where do, what do I do when I buy this gun? Do I need to go register it? What do I do with it? Well, you take it home. They don't believe that. They, they can't believe it. When some of these locales, you have to get a permit to buy the gun. The local law enforcement has to sign off on it. It's almost in New York, it's almost impossible to get a gun. It would be like us buying a machine gun or a short barrel shotgun. You have to go through almost the same number of hoops just to buy a gun to protect your family with. Uh, right. D.C. is a, that Heller case that they just overturned uh, about guns in, in uh, D.C., the nation's capital. The mo that's the murder capital of the whole country. Right and, now. and it's the one with the most strict gun laws. It's the one with the most strict gun laws. And it just seems to me that if a you know particular gun law is at the federal level and it's not you know obtrusive on your uh, rights or anything like that, then it just seems to me like the state level should, shouldn't really have any... I mean, I know each state is sovereign and they can make their own laws and their own independent ordinances and whatnot, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it just seems to me like it's really unfair that, you know, just because someone lives in New York or California or Illinois or somewhere like that with really anti-gun laws, I mean, it just seems like that's kind of unfair for them to have well, to live that way. The, the Morton Grove uh, ordinance that came down, the, the city fathers of Morton Grove got together many years ago and they decided that you can't have a handgun in the city limits. Now, you're already living there, you're paying taxes, you're working a job, and the, the city fathers are telling you that you can't have a gun in your home to protect your family. Kennesaw, Georgia, in retribution to that, they passed a law that you had to have a gun in your home. Of course, that's not constitutional either. They can't force you to buy a gun and ammunition. It is, however, an ordinance. And right, it I is an ordinance. I think people tend to, uh, you know, kind of, you know, overanalyze what an ordinance really is. And ordinances in general are not, it's not one of those things that are going to haul you off to jail over. I mean, normally you're, you're going to look at maybe a fine or they'll come out and talk to you about it. But generally something like an ordinance, for instance, a noise ordinance, if you're playing music too loud, the worst thing that's going to happen there is they're going to come out, you know, because they, they are obligated to come out and if they get a call. Right. And they're going to tell you to turn the music down. And if they get enough uh, repeat calls about you and, and that one particular thing, then, yeah, they might fine you or whatever. But generally an ordinance, it's just kind of one of those loosely, mm -hmm. you know, enforce things. They just don't really enforce a lot of those ordinances. Well, also yeah. something they don't tell you is the murder rate in Morton Grove went up, burglary went up, crime went up, Kennesaw it went down. But that was something that the media, that little detail, the media didn't feel like it was important to tell the people that. Well, not only that, but also the people of Kennesaw, I mean, you look at your average thug, you know, who's thinking about trying to break into a place or they're trying to do someone harm or whatever. They're just going to look at the laws in the area, you know. They're, they're dumb enough and naive enough to go, oh, well, in Kennesaw, you have to have a gun in your house. Mm -hmm. They're actually, you know, moronic enough to believe that just because that ordinance says they have to have a gun in their home, that everybody does. Right. When really, that's just not true. No, it's not, but... But, but it's again, a deterrent. It is a deterrent. It is a deterrent because they know that the average citizen, uh, they're more likely to run into a gun in a home in Kennesaw, Georgia, than in Morton Grove. That's right. Uh, absolutely. And the, the threat uh, of a gun is the only thing that keeps a criminal from breaking in on you. That's right. So, And uh, luckily, you know, a lot of the criminals are, you know, naive enough to, to look at things like that. That is correct. They'll look at Morton Grove and they'll say, okay, well, you know, they have ordinances against guns and all that, so obviously this is going to be a safer place for me to work. Yeah. 
but really nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, it's just right. like goes back to our other gripe about gun-free zones. I mean, right. you can't always assume just because something's a gun-free zone that it is. Right. It's just not. Just like uh, repeating myself, the Waffle House up by the highway up here was a, a, a gun-free zone. They got robbed out of business. Yeah. They, they closed were, that store down. They totally closed it down. They sure couldn't did. stay in business. The one across the street over here is still in business because it's not a gun-free zone. They allow guns. That's Concealed correct. carry. That is absolutely correct. So the, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. What we're trying to say is the law should be the same for every American. We, uh, one American shouldn't have to do something another American. Ha they don't, shouldn't have to jump through loops and hoops that other Americans don't have to do. I know, and it, it's just crazy. It is crazy. You know, and, like, here's a really good example. My pistol permit, all right? My uh, carry permit uh, expired at one point. I had a little bit of a lapse of, of carry right. coverage, whatever. Right. And uh, so I went to the probate court. I paid my little fine, or fine, well, it might as well be a fine, but yeah. I paid my little fee. Right. And, uh, you know, they took my picture, ran my background, everything. I just put in the paperwork for my carry permit this last uh, Thursday. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got this in the mail the following Wednesday. Right. So it was literally like four days, right. five days mm -hmm. it took me to get this. Whereby you go to Clayton County or somewhere in the, the city. Camp County or Fulton County. Right. It could be months before you right, get Right, because they're so backlogged with so many people. But where I live, you know, Henry right. County is right. not quite so bad. Right. But that just puts things into perspective for you how different jurisdictions are and how those ordinances can really affect the way people carry guns, own guns. In Henry County, gun ownerships are very open idea. They're very open. It's not even that different of a, uh, of a locale. The demographic's a little different. Mm -hmm. it, it's only like 25 miles from here. Right. But the thing is, there's just such a wide, diverse array right. of people in that 25 mile range mm -hmm. that it's enough to affect ordinances and laws. And here in Georgia, when you apply for your permits, you have to apply in the county that you live in. Right. So if you happen to live in DeKalb County and they're going to take eight months to get your permit, then that's too bad for you, buddy. Oh, well. Just too bad. They don't really want you to have a gun in DeKalb County anyway. They don't. Uh, they and really Georgia don't. is relatively open when it comes to gun laws. I mean, our gun laws are, are pretty reasonable. A lot of them make a pretty mm -hmm. good bit of sense for the most part. Mm -hmm. But that is the whole point of this video is what's good for the goose is good for the gander. That's correct. If I can walk into a gun shop and buy an AR-15, an AK-47 with a 75 round drum, 100 round beta mag, whatever, mm -hmm. then someone in California or someone in New York or wherever in the rest of the United States, mm -hmm. they're an American just like me. They have rights mm -hmm. just like I do. Under the Constitution. Under the Constitution. They live under the same rules. So why do. should their rights be infringed just because of where they live? That, that's the gripe. It's the demographics of it and the political part of it. It's the political stratum of each individual area and they all have their own circumstances their own problems, and ultimately at the state level, mm -hmm. each government body has their own basic goals they're trying to accomplish. Well, if Americans don't start speaking up for other Americans like we're doing right now, right. if they don't do it uh, after the next election or whatever for the president, uh, I'm afraid, I, I, I really have, I've been watching this coming on for a lot of years, and I'm an old, I'm an old fella, I've, I've seen America go from one end of the spectrum to the other. Uh, if we don't get together and support every American, we're, uh, like Benjamin Franklin said, uh, we will all hang together or we'll all hang separately. That's right. Now, that's, that's, the, that's the, the, what we need to keep and we need to concentrate on that. That's right. Uh, we've got to stick together as Americans. It doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. Young people, old people, whatever. We're all Americans and we're all in this boat together. And whatever happens to one American is eventually going to happen to all of us. Yeah, a house divided cannot stand. It cannot stand. And we are, right. on, we are on the road to division right now, and we need to, we need to stop that, and we need to get together. That's right. And that's what the government, you know, I think their ultimate goal as a whole is to do, is divide and conquer. That's correct. If they can divide you, right. then you're easier to control, you're easier to influence. Right. And uh, I think that's just an important thing to think about. Mm -hmm. Well, you look at it this way. Uh, America has, uh, has fighting teeth. Let, let's, let's envision ourselves as a seven-headed cobra. They're, tell you, they're cutting off one head at a time. That's right. And sooner or later, it's going to die. That's all there is to it. So we're going to have to stick together, and we're going to have to forget about a lot of the, the animosity that we have among each other. All Americans have to hang together. That's or right. We're, or we're all going to hang separate. You're, you're either American or you're not. But I have mm -hmm. a feeling if the Clinton gun ban tries to come back or whatever, they're going to awaken a sleeping tiger among the American people. They're going to find out. We're going to find out then who is an American and who isn't. 
that's going to separate the men from the boys. So we're all going to have to stick together or we, we're going under. I hate to say, but to some degree, there is going to be a line in the sand. There is. And you have to decide which end of it you're on. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, if you're, if you're in government, uh, I think that it's going to come down to you having to make a decision. What's more important, your job or your oath? Right, right. And that's a very important thing to consider. Whose well, side are you really on? Well, we're going to close the gun gripe for this, this week, and uh, we hope you all tune in to us and watch our videos. And, and every time somebody calls and, and tells us that they enjoy the videos, that's, that's what keeps me going. So uh, don't hesitate to give suggestions to us. We're always open-minded about it. And uh, we just wish you all have a good evening, and uh, keep watching us. Oh, yeah.